So what with the Song of Songs? What does any of this have to do with you and me? Well, many of you are already thinking about the so what's. There are some surprising things that we saw in our close reading of Canticle 2 and Canticle 4. Who's ever heard of goat hair before? What does the apple really stand for? By the way, this banner of love sticking out, we have a word for that, which is a phallic imagery, things that stick out like a phallus, the Greek word for a penis. Um, uh, we, we Phallic images include uh, towers, branches, bars, things that stick up and stick out. So when people are, are, are evoking male arousal or male eroticism, we find phallic symbols in lots of different places. And, and surely it can be argued that we see them even here um, in this uh, very antique biblical text. So um, lots of interesting things to, to, to uh, think about and to wonder about. But when I think about how come this matters to the class, well, I go right back to the dimensions of love. So how does this matter to the class? Well, we have seven dimensions of love. Is there intensity in this text? Well, sure there is. There's intensifiers by repetition. You are beautiful, my love. Oh, you are beautiful. Oh, you are beautiful. There's intensifiers by symbolization. Uh, my love is a flower, an apple tree among all those others in the wood. Um, her breasts are like two fawns feeding among the lilies. There is a symbolic intensification, this indirect description of a simile or a metaphor, which um, lifts it up, intensifies our expression and experience of what's being said. Um, uh, so there's intensity. Well, so much nature that I had to introduce the text out in our back rose garden. Almost all of the images in the Song of Songs are nat natural ones. They're a little challenging for us because they're agrarian images. They're images from agriculture, from the world of farming. But they're natural nevertheless. And they have, they have continued through uh, the history of Western literature, the importance of flowers to discussions of intimacy and love and, um, and courtship, desire. The importance of flowers is everywhere. The importance of, of birds, love birds. Uh, um, two lovebirds sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Even the, even the little sing-song rhymes that children have, um, uh, we have this notion of avian, uh, avian beauty. Avian, avian is, is the world of birds. Avian imagery, images of birds. So we have intensity, we have, um, we have nature, uh, we do have discernment because do you think that these two are, um, are meant for each other? Everything in the text suggests that they are, that these are right lovers, that she is as enamored in him as he is of her. Um, are there issues of identity? Well, sort of kind of tied to that. Um, uh, in the tradition, to call this Solomon's song is to say that all of this love, desire, um, poetry, this song is a kingly virtue. To say that this is Solomon is to say that, that this is also right and true and moral, just love. Um, that's one way we could say, and certainly that's how, that's how the, 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 the spiritual traditions have taken us. We're looking at this text as a literary text, mindful that there are communities of believers, both Jews and Christians of all stripes, who understand and include this in their sacred corpus, in their scripture. And we can read we can read the Bible in a literature class, but we're reading it uh, in, in, in attendance to its history and its literary possibilities. We're not using it as an object of our own um, spiritual devotion or practice, but, but some of us will. Some of us will use the Song of Songs and we'll hear it in wedding ceremonies very often. Um, Jews often include the Song of Songs in celebrations of Passover. There's even a community of 
um, of African Jews where the man of the house sings the Song of Songs at the end of the Sabbath dinner um, at, to his wife. And then guess what happens? Then they go upstairs and do uh, the blessing, the mitzvah of the weekend. They go and have sex and hopefully uh, make a baby to bring another um, of God's people into the world. So there are other communities who use these texts as, uh, as liturgical celebrations of their faith. And, and so whenever we're dealing with sacred texts, we can read, we can read the Quran, we can read the Book of Mormon, we can read the Vedas uh, from the Hindu traditions, but we have to read them mindfully that for believers of those faiths, these are special, they're privileged. And so we always want to treat scriptural, um, uh, we want, want to teach literary texts that have scriptural power for communities with respect. Uh, so, uh, so what? Yes, yes, this is a moral text that the churches and the synagogues have made much of. This is also uh, a love story between, uh, between God and God's people. So that's one of the ways they've interpreted this text uh, within the work of, of, of these church communities and these, uh, these uh, synagogue communities. So intensity, nature, discernment, morality. Um, I don't know that there's much about time or history uh, there are some sections where I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait till he gets over here. Where is he, where is he? Um, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, that last issue of representation. Um, well, we certainly see that to express love for these people, they need to express it in symbols. They need to express it using similes, my love is like, my love as, and metaphors. Um, and that that symbolization is part of the expression of this intense feeling. So one of the so what's is always to think about the text in terms of our uh, dimensions of love. But the other way to do a so what is what does it have to do with me or what I understand? Well, first of all, it's like yay eroticism for those of us who believe that love is a good thing and that passionate, physical, erotic love is a good thing, we have this validation in a very old, very revered text. So as you guys know, you know, I, 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 I am a Christian. I, I worship in a Christian church. My father was a pastor. Um, I'm a Christian married to a Jew. Um, but, but that Christian tradition in terms of my faith tradition is really important. So I'm, I'm happy to know that within my spiritual tradition, there's also a celebration and a validation of bodies. Uh, and that, that that has percolated along through the history of, of Western literature and Western culture. It's good to feel aroused and passionate and to delight in one's beloved in a very sensual and very physical way uh, when it's the right person when it's a true love, or maybe that deep, wonderful arousal is, a, is, is also a proof. It's a, it's a verification that this person is right. I certainly believe that, that the most, uh, you know, no one is more arousing than when you're in love with them. Um, so I, I, I think that's important. I think that there's been great anxiety about sex and passion and pleasure in our world. There's great perversions of it. There's great abstractions of it. This is um, as beautiful, as sexy as this is. This is so not porn. Whatever contemporary porn is, it sure is different from this. So it makes me wonder about the relationship between eroticism that's healthy, good, right, true, and holy and sensuality that is twisted, corrupt, objectifying, um, f shallow. Whatever this love is, it does not seem shallow. So that's a thing. I really think that's a thing your culture is going to have to, to work on and figure out. You, you guys live in a, a, a world, you've been brought up in a world with an access to, uh, to pornography that is like nothing that people of my generation had. And so that, that question, what's, what's the difference between eroticism that's healthy and, and, and eroticism that's pornographic and shallow? That's a really good, uh, that's a real, I think that's a really legitimate question for us to ask these days now. Uh, here we have a text that's a real counter description. Uh, it's a real difference from uh, the pornography that is um, around us and that so many of us have been exposed to. 
But the last thing I want to say that I think is great about the Song of Songs is, um, you know, we really do live in a culture that is steeped in sexism and sexual inequality. Uh, women have been silenced, women have been put down, women have been marginalized, and less so now. But when you look at the history of writing and the history of literature, um, we have very few and very um, uh, sporadic bouts of feminine energy, feminine writing, feminine experience. So one of the reasons I like Song of Songs so much is because the sisters are there. This power, this erotic pleasure, this desire, this flirtatious energy is just as strong for the women as it is for the men in this text. Which suggests to me that there might be a whole lot more balance between uh, the genders than has been experienced and witnessed in our cultures. So again, when we're looking for healthy models of, of um, heterosexual uh, eroticism, uh, one of those models, and of all kinds of, of all kinds of coupling, is that, that it's mutual, that pleasure is mutual, that, that no one is serving the other person, uh, but the serving is back and forth. Um, so I, I love that. I, 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 I love you. Captain Kirk's three rules for sex is that it's consensual. You're both on the same page. It's safe that, that there's n condoms are used and no, no, no infections are going back. And my third rule for lovemaking is that your pleasure's partner is as important as your own. Consensual, safe, and pleasure is, con is, is reciprocal. And I think that's, a, those are really good. You know, when I'm, when I'm talking to young people about what I think the rules of sex are, I think those are really good three basic rules. Uh, but the third one is the one that surprises people they haven't thought about. But Song of Songs has. In the Song of Songs, these couple, this man, this woman, are absolutely shared in power, in desire, and in poetry. What a worthwhile read. Till next time.